Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Curcio, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday, September 28th, and the year is 2020, and this is a YouTube live event. I am so glad that you've joined me. It's a special day here in the studio. I am celebrating, just by coincidence, it wasn't planned that way, my 22nd anniversary as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And what better way to celebrate than with all of you? Thank you for joining me. I always say what is old is new again, and that is exactly what's happened with the slimline card. Now, if you just recently started paper crafting, you might think the slimline card is something new, but it's not. It's actually been around for many, many years. And like all things, it's new again. But I decided tonight, not only did I want to share my version of a slimline card for you, but I wanted to up the scale a little bit. I'm going to put a window in it and I have an extended panel on this card that you are going to absolutely love and the best part of all is it's super easy. I've got tons of tips for you about the window so make sure if you're here watching the replay you watch the whole video. Now a couple things before we get started. First after tonight's live is over you'll find a link down below the video title that will lead you over to the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies that I've used for tonight's project. In addition to that, I wanna introduce you to Megan. Megan is my virtual assistant and yes, she is real. We are separated by 800 miles, but she is here to help interact with you. If you have logged in to your YouTube account, you'll see Megan's name in blue and she is here to help answer your questions and moderate the comments because quite frankly, it's impossible for me to do while I'm trying to stamp and that's what you came here to do. If you want to chat, whether it's during the live or you want to comment for the replay, you will need to log into your YouTube account. That is a requirement of YouTube in order to do so. And we hope that you do. I come back and I read every single comment, those in the live stream as well as those in the replay. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I've got lots to share with you. And I want to let you know, too, that I have a bonus project at the end of tonight's play um, replay for you to see. It is a variation of my slimline card, um, just to give you more ideas. So I'm really excited to share that with you as well. I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and turn the camera down and let's get started. I have a brand new tripod and I'm gonna be honest with you. I have osteoarthritis in my basal joints and it's now on my left side, which means I have to squeeze with this hand, which is the weaker of the two. So sorry, that's really rough on the way down. Okay. The very first thing I want to talk to you about is about the pieces. So I've got a piece of cardstock here, and I've got all the cutting dimensions for you down in the link below. But I'm just going to talk you through them because I know a lot of times when people watch the replay, they like to know. This has been cut seven inches by eight and three quarters, and then I scored it in half at three and a half inches. Okay, so that's what the slimline card is. Typically, you would just fold this. You've got your slimline card. The extra thing I'm gonna share with you tonight is I'm gonna teach you how to make an envelope for the card that I'm going to create with you. And I'm super excited to share that. Uh, I'm gonna go right through it for you. And I've got a template for you to make it even easier at home. But this is pretty simple, but I decided I wanted to up my game a little bit. So that is where I'm going to be bringing this in. This is another piece of paper. And guess what? We're gonna do a little more scoring on this one. We are going to score this again at three and a half inches. So we are doing the identical thing to this one as I did to the first one. So I've got my paper trimmer here. There is a scoring blade on my trimmer, which is the light one. There's also a cutting blade. You can navigate them up and down out of the way, which makes them super handy to have on your trimmer at the same time. And then I'm just going to score this one at three and a half as well. All right. So I've got those done. I'm going to set that trimmer off to the side. I'm going to bring in some tools tonight. So I want to make sure I have ample room. All right, now what I've got here is I've got my second slimline card. And I'd like to use my bone folder whenever I'm doing a fancy fold because that is what I'm going to turn this into. Okay, so we have two pieces here now. I'm going to set one of them to the side for right now. And I've got a piece of designer series paper. I'm going to have all the cutting dimensions for you down in that link of the video description. So don't think we've got to go over the whole thing. You can use adhesive for this. Um, to go ahead and adhere this, which is what I'm going to do. It's just going to make it a lot easier for me tonight, especially since we're live. I've got my silicone craft sheet here, which I absolutely love to use. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it, which means you're going to keep your work surface sticky free, especially if you're like me and you're a little zealous sometimes with the adhesive. 
I'm using Stamp and Seal Plus, so I'm going around the outside perimeter of my designer series paper, and I'm adding adhesive around the edges. You wanna make sure that you add it well, because you don't want this to lift, because we are gonna create a window in here. I hope I'm inside your camera view, I think I am. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more here. I think I got my edges, yep, I did. You know, this stuff is so clear that sometimes I can't see where I'm going. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to adhere this here to the center front panel of this card. You need to add the designer series paper first before you create the window. That's very, very important. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in one of the dies that's going to create the window. Now this comes from the rectangle stitched framelits dies. Love these because you've got graduated sizes. You've got regular rectangles here as well as these narrow ones. And I pulled out the largest narrow one off to the side here. I love that trendy stitch border on these as well. Super, super fun to use. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to position this where I'm gonna want the window on the front of my card. Keep in mind, lots of creative freedom here. So you can put this wherever you want. I'm opting for the center. And even though we have a magnetic plate that will hold our dies in place, I am going to recommend that you use some low tack tape. Now I have used this over and over and over again because I wanna make sure as it compresses through my die cutting machine, that it doesn't rip my cardstock. So I wanna be real careful about that. So I'm just gonna look and kind of see, eh, it looks about center, that looks pretty good. All right, now let me bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is brand spanking new. Um, it came out um, beginning of August. I have to tell you, in my 22 years of being a demonstrator and paper crafting, this is by far the smoothest die cutting machine I've ever used. And it's not because I sell it, okay? I really, really love this machine. All the plates are numbered, which means if you're a brand new paper crafter, this is gonna be slick and easy for to use. And guess what? Look at all the instructions are printed right here. So you don't have to go scrambling for a manual. So we're gonna be using some thin dies. And so number two is the plate we're going to need to use. And it's described right here for you. So that's gonna go on top. And then plate three is my clear cutting mat that protects that work surface. All right, so let me get my paper here. Do you see how this is anchored down? Well, obviously this is not going to fit, do you see? So I'm gonna teach you something. You can't go under, otherwise it's going to cut through the whole card. So you have to go over. I'm hoping this is gonna stay in place. I did die cut one just in case because I'm working in a tight area here. So the die is here, cardstock is on top. I'm going to position this here on the platform. I'm adding the other number three clear plate over the top that protects your cardstock. And then what we're going to do, that mat underneath me is kind of shimming all over the place. Let me just move it. It'll make life a lot easier. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crank this through. Um, I will tell you, this works like a charm. Now, some of you who are paper crafting for a period of time are probably looking at this thinking, there is no way that, that cardstock is going to be usable. And I'm going to show you that it is. Let me just zoom you in just a little bit. I'm going to take this apart. Look at, do you see how it's kind of marred from the compression of the rollers in your die? Yeah, but it's gonna be okay. So let me move all of this off to the side and let me show you how to disassemble this. Because we've compressed this, it's gonna be very, very important that you take your time when you take this apart. So I'd like to use that low tack tape. Some people use washi tape or even post-it notes will work. I like to reuse that tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. You can see how it's popping out right here. And then here's the other end right here. I reuse that. And that's gonna leave us this. Okay, now I used thick whisper white cardstock. And there we go. We've got the designer paper and we have the cardstock. We're gonna use this. Don't throw this away. This you can use for another project. Let me set those off to the side for just a second. But you're probably looking at this going, oh, that looks so bad. But it's okay because do you remember this other one? This is where the fun fold comes into this window. So let me show you. In order to hide this, because it's on the front and the back, this is going to go what is on the top of this fold. So this would be the top of an original card. So this is going to go here. Not only is this card really slick in appearance, it's gonna give you a ton more room for any type of card. Perhaps it's going to be a birthday, you'll have a lot of signatures, Maybe you wanna put a couple gift cards, a family Christmas photo, lots of ideas here. 
Now you can go ahead and use adhesive, but I'm gonna tell you, I found that liquid glue is a lot easier because you got a little bit of shimmy room. I am not a glue girl. <laughs> Those of you that have watched my videos know that I am messy with glue. I, glue and I just don't get along, but I'm gonna be really careful tonight and I'm gonna make sure that I don't put it on too thick and I'm not gonna get too close to the edges because I know it's gonna ooze a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little glue here, all right? The one great thing about the liquid glue is it's very, very strong. So that means I have gonna have to worry about it falling apart when I'm all done. All right, so now this is that ugly panel that's going to the inside top of my card. So I'm gonna line this up here. And like I said, there's a little wiggle room which is gonna be really, really important. I'm going to add this underneath just in case I got any oozing. Keep it away from my work surface. And then I'll press that in place. Still messy here, though, isn't it? Okay, so we can gussy that up. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do in just a second. So we've got this panel that will come up. And we have this panel that will come down. Do you see the window? Just think of the different sizes and shapes that you can create. And, of course, you can even use punches here if you'd like. All right, now let's decorate this. So remember that piece of cardstock that I told you about that's here? All right, what I'm gonna recommend that you do is that you use that same piece that you took out from here because it's going to fit perfectly. It's gonna be like a puzzle. So I've got that cardstock here and I'm gonna be using my Memento black ink pad and I've pulled out this adorable angel image for my Christmas card. And I got her from the stamp set that's called Flight of Fancy. Now you may have overlooked this in the mini catalog but I have had a ton of fun with this. If you've watched my channel videos before, you may have seen me use this image for something other than a Cupid image. And it's really versatile. Just think of baby cards too. So I've pulled out this one. And because this stamp is very sizable, you can see it's very closely related to the ink pad. I'm gonna do myself a favor and I'm gonna ink it face up. This is going to ensure that I don't miss a spot because the other way is big and it navigates and then oftentimes I miss a little tiny area. So that's just a tip for you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna protect that work surface because I have a feeling that some of that's gonna end up on my little grid there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp this right on top of here. I am moving that image all the way to the bottom so that the little houses in Bethlehem there are gonna be near the very bottom of that piece. And there we go, we've got our image. All right, I'm gonna clean my stamp right off camera using my Stampin' Scrub. Some of you like the Stampin' Chamois, that's a wonderful product as well. All right, now I'm gonna do a very, very quick 411 on coloring. I've already got one that's all finished, but I wanna talk some of those people that are through who are new to using alcohol-based markers. Now these are the Stampin' Blends. I've got one, like I said, that's finished, but this is the Balmy Blue. And the reason I chose to add this color is because it's one of the colors here in the designer series paper. This is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. A blue is not necessarily a blue. If you've ever shopped for pants and a blouse, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are different shades of blue and even black and red. So I often like to coordinate my projects, which makes this super easy to do. They come in a combination of the light and the dark markers. They are dual ended. So one's a brush and then one has more of a chisel tip. You can choose whichever one you like. I want to add that these should be stored horizontally when you're not using them. If you store them vertically, what's going to happen is the color and the alcohol is gonna to drain to one end and dry out one tip. So make sure they're stored horizontally. I'm gonna use the chubby end here because I'm just gonna give you a little quick 411 on how these work. You're going to add color just like you would a regular marker. So I'm just going to work on these two areas here. You can see that the color applies effortlessly. In addition to that, it, fly, it applies smoothly. If you repeat an area, unlike a regular marker, you're not going to get those light and dark spots because the alcohol, as it evaporates, can create, creates consistency on the paper. I'm going now to the dark shade. And since I'm not quite sure where the shading would be on this, I'm gonna put all mine on one side. So I'm gonna do a little here and a little here and a little here and a little here. And then I need to allow that alcohol to evaporate a little bit because if you want to go back and shade this, you need to let that kind of dissipate. So I'm gonna go back to my light now and I'm gonna pull these together. And what's gonna happen is as that evaporates again, you're gonna see that this is gonna look more blended than harsh lines of where it stops and it starts. Okay, like I said, I've got one here that's already finished for you. Isn't she cute? Oh, she's just so cute. Look at that little face. All right, so we're going to add her now to the card. 
do you recall that we had this panel here? All right, well, I decided that I didn't want this panel to be white. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of designer series paper. This is all from that same series with the snowflake splendor. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? Oh, so pretty. So I'm gonna add my designer series paper to this panel first before I add my image. So I'm gonna flip this over and again, I'm gonna use my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna add adhesive around the perimeter of the designer series paper. I don't know if you realize this, but all the products that I'm sharing with you tonight can all be purchased in my online store and I offer exclusive and generous rewards to my customers. All that information is on my website at lisasstampstudio.com. And I would love to just bless you with a gift for your order. And then this is going to get attached here. So let me just line that up and then attach that here. I got a little anxious with my tape there. Did you see that? All right, now we've got our image. We're gonna close this. And then this is going to fit in here. If you decide to use dimensionals, I want you to be aware of something. It can catch just a little bit because of the dimension difference. I opted to use regular adhesive. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add adhesive across the back end here of my image. And we're gonna work just like we would a puzzle. So you're gonna come right through that window. You're gonna work it within the stitched line of that frame. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press and you're gonna lift the cover. And that's gonna push this right in place and it's gonna give you perfect positioning. But do you remember here on the inside of the card how it kind of looked ugly because we compressed it through the rollers to die cut it? Let's work on that. So I cut myself a piece of Pacific Point cardstock that lined the center. And again, keep in mind that I've got all the cutting dimensions for you. And then I cut myself a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and you can see I colored it a little bit, and I stamped it with this greeting, which I thought was adorable for this card. It comes from Christmas Means More, and I chose this one. It says, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Does anyone else remember um, It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart? And that was one of the phrases, I think, from that movie, if I'm not mistaken. I love these greetings. I think this is so much fun. A little bit of nostalgia for those of us who are a little bit older and definitely really inspiring for Christmas cards as well. So let's go ahead and let's add some adhesive now to the back of this panel. I'm just gonna speed this up and just add a little bit down the center here. And then we're gonna adhere this to the Pacific point. And then I wanna show you the back of this card. But guess what? We're also gonna make an envelope for this because I get a lot of questions about envelopes, especially when I make cards that are not a standard size or they may not fit into a regular envelope. So we're gonna make an envelope for this too. This is going to get mounted here. And guess what? It covers up all of our ugly on the inside of the card. I did use some clear wink of Stella on my bells, on my original card. Let me go ahead and get my scratch paper here. I'm gonna add a little bit to those bells. For those of you that don't know this, this is a fabulous thing. This is like a shimmer pen in a brush. It's wonderful, which means you don't have to deal with glitter or with glue. I like to make sure it's going nice and go. Got all that flowing out really good. I'll add that there. It has an alcohol base as well, which means it's gonna evaporate and dry very, very quickly. And it's gonna give you that perfect little shimmer. I wish you could see it. I'm sure on camera it doesn't pick up. But this panel then will come up. So lots of room here for signing, family photo, uh, maybe a, your regular newsletter if you do those at Christmas. And this comes down and then this comes across the top. I thought that this screamed for a little bling. So I'm gonna bring in one of the star elements. Now these are in copper. And at first glance, I was like, oh, do I really wanna add copper to this? And you know what? I was really happy with it. I thought that little extra bling added an awful lot to my angel. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that here. All right, let's work on the envelope for this card. And then I've got one other slimline card to share with you as a bonus. It doesn't have a window, but I'm gonna talk you through how that one easily could. I wanna be able to give you a lot of bang for your viewing tonight. So let me switch this out of the way and let me bring in the paper and I'm gonna bring in my trimmer because we're gonna need that. And let me move you out so that you can see a little bit better. All right, I have made up a template for you that looks like this. If you go over to the link that's in the video description below, you'll be able to see this. This has got all the cutting dimensions and the scoring dimensions 
for the envelope I'm going to teach you. Super easy, you can download it and print it or save it or pin it to Pinterest, whatever's easy for you. All right, so let me show you what we're gonna do. I have pulled out a piece of designer series paper from the exact same um, package that I used everything else from. This measures nine inches by 12 inches. So you're gonna use most of a one sheet of a 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper. I like to score on the wrong side. That's just a Lisa thing. So this is the side that's gonna be up for me. So I'm gonna score on this side. They're both pretty, aren't they? What we're going to do along here on the 12 inch line, we're gonna make two score lines. The first one is at two and a half inches. So we line that up here, which is nice and straight. The lines are printed all the way down the trimmer, which is gonna make this easy. This is my scoring blade and we'll score. The next score line is going to be at six and a half inches. And look at this trimmer has an extendable arm, which makes it really easy to use, goes all the way up past 17 inches. So I'm gonna go over here to six and a half inches now. I'm gonna to try to move this in your camera view a little bit better. We got six and a half inches here. I'm gonna line it up right against that straight edge again, and then we'll score. All right, so now we've got two score lines here. The next one, we are actually going to score at one inch. So you can actually score on either side here. I wanna show this to you. This is one of the things about this trimmer that I absolutely love is that the guide is clear. So if you have smaller cutting and scoring dimensions, like a quarter, a half, a one, even one and a quarter. You can do it on this side if you have a small piece of paper. Bix, you can also go on this side. So I'm gonna do the one inch here because I'm gonna hold most of it with my right hand. I am right-handed. I'm gonna make sure that that's lined up pretty good and then we're going to score. On the other end now, I just turned it, we're gonna score at two inches. So I'm gonna line that up one more time, two inches. These are super easy score lines. That is it. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but bear with me because I want to use my marker now and I want to show you what's going to get cut away because I'm a visual person. And I'd like to think that most people are as well. All right. Normally I would not do this, but I want to make sure that you can see and I know that's really hard in the video. So we have score lines here and here. And then we have score lines of one inch here and a two inch here. Okay, you guys see that? All right, we are gonna cut away this panel, this panel, this one, and this one. All right, so I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. Those of you that are very, very proficient with a trimmer, have at it. You'll have a great time. And then I'm gonna snip this away, and then I'm gonna cut this one down here away as well. So I'm just cutting away those X's, and I marked them so that it would be easier for you to see. Some people tell me they don't really like a template, that they're more of a video kind of person. They like to actually see it done so they can stop and play the video and do it right along with me. So I wanted to make sure I covered all of you. And then we've got the last one here, and then we're gonna cut this away. All right, it's probably still not looking like much, is it? All right, but we're almost there. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna create a tapered edge here so that this can close a lot easier. So what I recommend is you come here and you cut, and you cut. I don't measure, that's too much trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. It doesn't matter if this side and the first side I just did are actually the exact same angle, it doesn't matter. Now what's going to happen is this is going to fold up. So I'm gonna close this panel here and I'm gonna take this panel here. It's starting to look like an envelope now, isn't it? I'm gonna go over it with my bone folder. I am big on the bone folder to make sure that everything is nice and tight and it's gonna close up perfectly. Here is that flap. I'm gonna put it on the outside because that's how an envelope is made. Now, when you go to do the adhesive, I wanna show something to you. I created this envelope so that there's an overlap here and there's gonna be an overlap here. So you're gonna to need to put adhesive in both places. Here, so let me take my adhesive and we're gonna come right across here and I'm gonna take it across here at the top. I hope you can see that. All right, and then I'm going to shut this. That's all you have to do is just close it up and that's gonna give you the pocket. This now is the bottom and I just know I'm getting excited that this is gonna end up on my work surface. So let's go ahead and add more adhesive here. The one thing about the Stamp and Seal Plus, it is super duper strong. So you don't ever have to be worried that or be embarrassed that your projects are gonna fall apart. Look at this, is this not adorable? Okay, where's our card? Okay, so we're gonna slide her down inside and you've got your little flap here and I know you're creative, you'll come up with something or you can adhere it 
And then you can go ahead and you can label this with a Sharpie marker. You can actually put a label on here if you do. Um, and of course you can add another piece of cardstock if you wanna send it that way. This will go for regular postage. This card will also fit in a business size envelope. So if you don't have designer series paper and you don't wanna cut and make your own envelope, you can use a business size envelope. Isn't that fun? Okay, so let me show you that bonus project I was sharing um, about in the beginning. So this one, of course, has a coordinating envelope as well. This uses an entirely different stamp set, but isn't this beautiful? This uses the Wishes and Wonder Bundle. Oh, I'm a bling girl. So anytime I've got shiny foil or metallics, it just makes my heart soar. This is the exact same card as this. Let me show you. It opens up, more designer paper. Look at that ribbon, isn't that classy? And then there's another panel on the inside, but look, no window. I wanted to share this with you because I'm cognizant that a lot of people are new to paper crafting and they don't have all the tools. So if you don't have dies or punches yet, you can still absolutely make this card. But for those of you that do, guess what? Die cut the circle here and create this window with the foil. You're just gonna have to be careful of those layers like I mentioned, so that you might not be able to put as much as I have here. But again, just another way to create a beautiful trifold slim line card and of course a custom envelope. Isn't this fun? I'm really, really, I'm enjoying the comeback for this project. Which one of these is your favorite? I favor the window because it's different and I love the trifold on it. But I really, really like the nostalgic feel of this trifold by itself, even without the window. So you've got lots of options and lots of places to add a newsletter, a photo and signatures. All right, let me turn the camera around. Okay, I recently moved the tripod to the other side because we had to get a new tripod and I'm still rusty at turning it, so bear with me. Before we go, I have a couple things I wanna share with you. The first is if you have not heard or signed up for the Creative 8 Fall Online Retreat, you are missing out. It is coming up this Saturday, October 3rd. There is still time for you to join me. I would love to have you as my special guest. You can find all the information over at lisasstampstudio.com, click on classes and then events and go to October 3rd and the information is there. But let me tell you, it is a fun day from home. This is an opportunity for you to get inspired from five top Stampin' Up! demonstrators. We call ourselves the Creative 8 team. We have done this online retreat now. Oh, this is now our fourth time over a year. And it has been so popular, we've been asked over and over to hold it again. And we are doing it again for fall. There are live demonstrations throughout the entire day. That's 10 live demonstrations. In addition to that, we each have numerous projects that we are going to share like this as alternatives to what we demonstrated. The best part about this is not only the live part of just watching and being inspired, but you are also going to get followed up in an email with all the tutorials and the video for every single project that we did. So whether you can watch live or not doesn't really matter. Now listen, the event is held on Facebook. So for those of you that are not on Facebook, don't worry, we've got you covered as well. I will be sure to send you the video and all the tutorials via email one week after the event is over so that you don't miss out. I would love to have you join me. So just imagine, Saturday, you order food in, you can stay in your sweats or PJs all day, you can watch one inspiring video project after another. We're gonna be able to follow up with all that information and hardcore writing in your inbox so you can keep it and let it inspire you throughout the year. We design these projects so that you can use any stamp sets that you want. You do not have to use the stamp set that we use. You don't even have to stamp along with us. You can just have a fun, lazy day creating at your own pace while you watch us. Now, $45 covers the entire day out the door. And Prize Patrol, did I mention that we give away prizes? We sure do. So everyone who registers is automatically gonna be placed in a drawing. We pull random names and we give away product throughout the day. It's lots and lots of fun. And I love the fact that you can do it from the comfort of your own home and watch and the replays or the live at your convenience. I sure hope that you would join me. I would love to have you be there. Now, before we go, I also want to mention one other thing. I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. 
because I'm coming back live with you next Monday, October 5th. I've got a really fun project for you, something different. It could be a gift. It could be for yourself. I've got lots of options for you, and I hope that you'll join me. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalogs, there are two of them, I would love to send them to you. You can request them over at lisasstampstudio.com and click on catalogs. I'm just checking my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything, and I think I have. Um, we're good to go, and I look forward to having you join me next Monday, which is October 5th already. It'll be 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Megan, thanks so much for your hard work and interaction tonight. I hope you all stay well, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.